Part two of the body vlog. <laughs> We've got a lot to do today. We've got to go to the library. I've got to go and see my sister. We've got to watch a horror movie. I'm not working today. Um, I'm going to read some body books. So, we're not. Bertie's reading poetry. But maybe Bertie can tell you what he's reading today as well. That might be nice, huh? Yeah, yeah, I think let's do that. Okay. Um, consider this the intro to body book part two. Have you got any cards again? Oh, yeah, I've got any cards. Hot. Old school butt, butt butts. Yeah. Hey, new friend. I think this might be, um, smart. Hmm. Your nice touch. Oh, really? That's nice. Hiya. Oh, hi. Does Bertie tell smell too strong as patchouli? Just a little, little black smudge on, yeah. on their head. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Off we go again. Error, error. Off we yeah, go. Yeah, off we go again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what are you reading at the moment for this body project? Oh, um, Mother the Missing Body. Okay. Yeah. And you're enjoying that? Mm. Nancy Drew esque. It's like Nancy it? Drew. Yeah. I've never read Nancy Drew, but it's like the Nancy Drew film with Emma Robertson. Yeah, which we like, don't we? Yeah. Very much. Yeah. yeah. It's got that kind of kid feel to it yeah but with the kind of adult sensibilities sort right. of thing yeah and i found that about the short story in yeah. um, the choose your adventure one as well yeah that, um, so it's like a knowing that they can write in lots of different styles quite well yeah 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 it's me hey i've got some Currently reads and re red reads. Red reads. Yeah, so yeah. yesterday I bought this. This yeah. is Field, Field Guide by Robert Haas from so 1973. It, it's lovely, isn't it? It just looks like a notebook. Beautiful. Yeah, there's a whole range of these. Um, I think they're called Yale Younger Poets series. There's, I know there's John Ashbury on mm. one of them as well. Um, this is my introduction to Robert Haas and I absolutely loved it. Probably maybe like best read of the year or definitely the best poetry I've yeah. read for a while. Um, so yeah, I sat up and read it last night, which is nice when you buy a book and read it, isn't it? That's quite yeah. rare. Um, so yeah, loved that. He five does, out of five. It, do you think he's related to the avocados? Yes. Yeah. And then I finished um, A Walk in the Sun by Harry Brown. This is a brilliant. Also, um, I'm on a bit of a roll at the moment. So this is a World War II novel written in 1944. Um, it just follows one sort of um, platoon um, on a mission to sort of try and take over a farmhouse mm -hmm. so it's very kind of specific you mm -hmm. know that you learn, learn about these people and you know as i guess as they wouldn't have known what else was happening yeah you know, the rest of the war um so i loved it i thought it was brilliant i thought it was well written kind of really um of the moment you could tell it was kind of from the ex experience of the of the war and yeah very okay. very good um and then last night i started and I've got this new thing where I think I'm just gonna just gonna pick up the book that I fancy reading at mm. any given time, rather than sort of like give myself rules and like I've started this book so I can't pick up this other book because I think then you just end up reading out of a chore and then it's like almost like yeah. becomes like a job. Um, so I'm just gonna pick up if I fancy reading something, I just pick it up and start reading it. And so mm. even if I've got like ten books midway through, that's fine. You can do what you want. Can't do what you? I want. I don't, yeah. It's not about finishing books. It's yeah, about we're not enjoying reading. You. So, uh, yesterday I read the intro to Foucault in California. Uh, this is by Simeon Wade, but the intro was by... So this is great. This is about kind of... Um, there's this one reference in a biography of Foucault to this um, event where Foucault went to a Death Valley um, with a couple of... Uh, to do a reading, to do a, a talk. Um, but a couple of the professors took him to the desert and they dropped acid. And it was like a life-changing experience for him. So there's this one, one mention in one biography of him. So people have just assumed 
that didn't really happen. That's yeah. ridiculous. We yeah. could never, you know, take drugs and be like changed by it because it was too much of an intellectual. Yeah. Um, uh, but she found the guy who is Simeon Wade, who was one of the professors, um, him and his partner, who was a pianist. They both, um, the sort of gay couple, took him out to the, the desert and. Um, it, it sort of, it, it sort of, he was quite eccentric. This guy, by the time she had met him, mm -hmm. it was quite a little later on in his life, like two thousand thirteen, fourteen, mm -hmm. something like that. And um, she was like doubting the validity of his yeah. claims. Um, but yeah, uh, gradually, sort of, he found a lot of because he's like off grid, like no, mm. no computer, no phone, nice. nothing. Um, he kept sort of finding little these little bits, like photographs of him yeah. and Foucault, and it sort of turned out that it was like much more. This did actually happen. And he'd written a book, which he had claimed that Foucault had read and approved. Oh, okay. Is this the book? Then? This is the book. Right, okay. I couldn't quite work out yet. Yeah. Okay, great. So You're going to get the new book. You said there was a new book. There is a new book, and it's yeah. um, gone right down on price as well. Oh. Online. I'm not sure if that means because there's a paperback coming out. Oh, okay. You should, get that. Yeah. you should get that. You should get that. And then I also started, which is a book that I bought yesterday as well, the Vashti Bunyan memoir, his Wayward, um, Just Another Life to Live. Just Another Life to Live. Yeah. Um, so and it's, it's lovely so far, really nicely written. Um, uh, yeah, it's talking about her sort of childhood um, and sort of growing up in London at the time, you know, post-war. Um, mm. Yeah, that's going to be a lovely read. I'm going to read that one as well. And this morning I started Thrill by Jackie Collins. Yeah, how thrilled are you? It's, this is, I think this is going to be great. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because this morning when I mentioned it, you were a bit yeah. like, oh, I don't know if I want to read it. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, like when... when <laughs> That sort of thrill has gone yeah. after I'm having to read thrill. Um, so I think I'm like maybe leaving it a bit late. But yeah. at this point, no. But as soon as I picked it up and started reading it, it's so easy to read. Yeah. And it's got a super sort of short... No, you can't really see. Super short chapters. Yeah. Well, I know you're doing no, that. There's no, no chapters. Chapter. When I was making for a radio, I was literally just turning pages. It's like chapter, chapter. Yeah. Big writing, short chapters. Yeah. And um, pictures of her in the middle. Pictures of her. Uh, so I've read the, um, like the... I guess there's a prologue. Um, which is great from the point of view of, um, I guess, this uh, Lorenzo, whatever his name is. Um, it's good stuff. Really yeah. Good. So I think mean, this is going to be super fun. <laughs> uh, especially since, like, after this afternoon's last school crossing <gasps> last on holiday. Pop, yeah, so but Easter break, read. spring break. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I also am I'm tempted to sort of pick up this one, which is Sean's book, which yeah. is um, The World of Kindness, a Psilocybin Odyssey by... Bet Williams. Should we look at Bet Williams again? Bet Williams. She's, she's looks. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Yeah. I want to go mushrooming with Bet. Yeah, and it's got um, quotes from Michelle T and Dennis Cooper on the back, so it, it's going to be great. And I'm just in a very mushroomy mood at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no worries. Mm. How's your body today? Um. Feels fine. Mm. Feels fine. I've been going out for walks right here. Went to the town yesterday. Yeah. We yeah. went to the library and um, the corp today. Yeah. So, yeah. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. I think it's great. Okay. Books with body in the title. Um, one thing I forgot to say when I did last week's, last week's last vlog. Um which is these three, that I forgot to say that this does have like a, you know, a content warning or a trigger warning for um, like sexual assault and R word. And this also has trigger warning for like child sexual assault as well. From reading this one, she was talking a lot about um, sort of writing memoir. And one of the memoirs she talked about was... Memorial Drive Ooh. by Natasha Trethewey. Oh, I don't know if that name, I'll have to check. But um, I kind of know, you know, vaguely remember this one. Um, oh, it's a Barack Obama book of 2020. And I thought, oh, it was at the library, so I've got that uh, to read. It's Memorial Drive, a daughter's memoir. Um, uh, okay. It's about um, her former stepfather, shot and killed her mother and then it's about an inflicting excavation of the wounds that never healed 
So there's that one. Um, thank you as well to people who've recommended um, some body books as well. I'll kind of uh, check them out. Um, a lot of them end up being quite, um, I guess, uh, a little bit subject matters, a little bit difficult. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll see how I go. A uh, couple of other books I've got in the library. This isn't strictly body, but I thought we can, you know, I hope it's okay to talk about other stuff. So I've also got this at the library which is Stubborn Archivist by Yara Rodriguez Fowler. Um, and I've got this out because I'm going to buddy read it with um, Anna Marie from Actual Spinster. Um, we have just buddy read this one, which is it's an incredibly cute little book if I hold it up to a regular <laughs> paperback. So we, we read this one together, which was really interesting. Um, it's just a quite a short book, um, Judith by Miriam Karpilov. It's from, when is it written? 1911. And it's kind of like letters from Judith to her, how they, they describe as um, a dashing revolutionary who routinely disappoints her. Um, so it was really quick to read, but I thought it was really interesting um, book. Um, kind of a little bit slight, I think, because of its, just because of the size, really. But yeah, I, I wouldn't mind reading um, other books uh, by her as well and but what was good about it too was that it had this really great um translator's note and I've kind of I really like her translator's note she kind of talked about how they actually found a um so it was in the Yiddish and they found a version um that um the author actually started translating herself and how but it was like after this person had the translator who is Jessica Kurzain had already translated it but she kind of referenced referenced it then um, in her translation and about she was talking about how um, the translation was almost like a little bit dated so she the choices that she made anyway that was interesting so we read that and now we're going to read this one I don't know anything about this actually the author is a Brazilian British um, writer from South London um, and it's about when your mother considers another country home it's hard to know where you belong when the people you live among can't pronounce your name, it's hard to know exactly who you are. And when your body no longer feels like your own, it's hard to understand your place in the world. So, yeah. Oh, OK. I oh, know. I thought there's some bits <laughs> like that. I thought it was maybe in this, but it isn't. So, yeah. Interested to try that one. And then the other book I got at the library is Several People Are Typing by Calvin Kasulke. And um, this is Sage's Patreon book club I was kind of think what it's called buddy read yeah group buddy read um I think this is yeah this is kind of gonna be really quick to read because is it all sort of done via messages um working on a spreadsheet for a New York based PR firm Gerald has his consciousness uploaded into his company's slack channel he posts for help but his colleagues assume it's an elaborate joke to exploit the new working from home policy and now that Gerald's productivity is through the roof his bosses are into happy to let him work from wherever he says he is I saw this at Chelsea we just been into Chelsea life as well I just saw it in there so yeah and maybe read that this weekend um we did pop into Chelsea for life I'll show you what I got. Look, it's like a little unboxing from my really cute um, box bag. Okay, are we ready? <gasps> the Mushroom of the End of the World on the Possibility of Life and Capitalist Ruins by Anna Lohenhout Singh. Um, this has been on my list for a long time, but it's always been quite expensive. And I mean, this was sort of expensive but cheaper than it has been so I don't know if this is a is this a new edition or a new kind of version I don't think it is it says 2015 but yay it's actually a really nice um looking book because it's got images in as well this is going to be this is going to be good friends that's that one The Care Manifesto. So I read the um, one about mutual aid in this series and um, I liked it a lot. So this is The Care Manifesto, Politics of Interdependence by The Care Collective. 
um, blurbed by Naomi Klein and Judith Butler. Who, if I wrote, you know, if I wrote a book, I'd want them to blurb it. In the wake of um, COVID-19, the need to acknowledge our mutual independence and vulnerabilities is more urgent than ever. Care must be valued and shared, no longer tolerated as an exploited form of labour shouldered mainly by women and the poor. Rejecting the extensive carelessness so evident today, the author's model of universal care calls for inventive forms of collective care at every scale of life. I've also got a cute bookmark with a bell hook coat on it. There is light and darkness, you just have to find it. is relevant to this vlog. Queer Body Power, Finding Your Body Positivity by Essie Dennis. As a young queer plus size person, Essie Dennis has spent a lot of time feeling like they weren't enough, not queer enough, not feminine enough, not perfect enough. When they took to social media to share how they felt, they were overwhelmed by how many others felt the same. I look too masculine to be non-binary, I look too feminine to be a lesbian, am I too fat for drag? It's got a few... It's got, I like a, I like a, a good trigger warning. So it says it is dealing with ableism, eating disorders, fat phobia, um, racism and transphobia. So those are the three books I bought. Currently reading this, as discussed, love the cover. I'm just on the second chapter, so just on page 50, but I'm going to read this this weekend so I'll let you know how it goes um so far it's kind of quite cute I don't know if it's going to stay I know that this has got eating disorders actually in it so um we'll see how that goes the other thing I was going to do while we're here is mention a couple of other books that I've read recently that I didn't tell you about but only the stuff that I thought was interesting I loved Hellbound Heart <laughs> by Clive Barker um, so I've actually got my pinhead socks on today um, we've watched three of the films and I this I just loved the films they're so amazing and um, the films are based the first film was based on this book um, which I really loved uh, they call they talk about the um, like I don't I so to put, I don't know if they actually call him Pinhead in this. Is that just like a thing that's kind of come later? But they talk about it being um, these kind of Cenobites uh, by the order of the gash. <laughs> uh, it's so good. I loved it. Um, so yeah, it was five stars. I've got to read more. Clive Barker. Um, I also read The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. Um, uh, Charlotte from Bookish Mama Blooms recommended it to me and... I thought I really really liked it uh, it's so it's set in a bookshop it's so bookish it talks about lots of different writers and books and I really like that I felt like um like it's very plot wise it kind of didn't quite um sustain itself kind of I felt like a tiny bit lost interest towards the end but I did I thought it was really good it's been um I read a few edits and it, it felt like one of the more easy to read ones um while still sort of dealing with um kind of important you know important stuff and I also read Pet by Akoike Amezi. Um, and I really liked that one. Um, I'm interested in reading. I've got better to read as well. I didn't... I do like Akoike Amezi's writing. I didn't... I felt like it was like maybe like a, a little bit weirdly pitched um, because it's sort of... The characters feel quite young. They feel almost like younger than teenagers. But it... So... I don't know if it quite worked and where it was pitched at. I'm not sure. Um, but I, I, I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to reading another one. Uh, yeah, so... There we go. Been shopping for food. I got cake. I got cake from, like, a lovely cafe Kemi's, but it bought me cake. It's, like, blackberry and violet almond cake. Chocolate slasher night, Friday mm -hmm. night. 
and you've got flapjack though, haven't you? Yeah, it's, it's all in the ballpark. Like, we, yeah. Actually, we don't, I don't often have chocolates on the mm. Friday nights. Mm. Um, What's that show we're going to watch? We're going to watch Cheerleader Camp from 1988. Mm. It's a classic. Yeah. Friday the 13th rip-off type thing, yeah, I'm hopefully. Yeah, excited. We're both excited. It's a new one to both of us. Mm hmm um, I've got a smooth lemon protein flapjack and yeah. a salted caramel. Yeah, which is your favourite? Uh, it's really difficult to, to say. <laughs> I initially started off with the smooth lemons mm. and was convinced that there could be nothing better than mm. these, but then these came along mm. and I think possibly salted caramel might win. When you eat them, are you going to have a bite of one and then a bite of the other and just alternate them like that? Yeah. Mm. Um, I've had a bit more Margaret and the mystery of the missing body. I don't want to sort of say too much plot wise because it's kind of quite fun to sort of discover it as you go along because it's uh, it's almost I think it's like a is it 90s set in the 90s it's a new book but kind of like a queer 90s but with it's sort of like I said sort of Nancy Drewish um, with like some kind of pop culture stuff and then also Maybe a little bit of weird verging into supernatural stuff, I'm not sure. I don't know, we'll see how that goes, but um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I did find it a little bit felt like from one chapter to the next, it kind of jumped quite a bit often and I wasn't really, and there was like a little bit of, there was either like a bit of repetitiveness or there was like people I went to who they were necessarily and it felt a little bit like, um, almost like short stories about people being put into one book but I, I'm guessing that was sort of like a stylistic choice in the kind of way that books would have been written maybe um yeah but it's fun it's fun <laughs> brighter <laughs> I'll go here I'm about to go to um I'm about to walk to yoga to teach a class um but I'm about I'm over halfway of Margaret and the mystery of the missing body um I saw a review of kind of saying that you don't really know where it's going to go and that's true and I don't know if that's uh I don't think <laughs> if that's necessarily a positive um but currently I'm slap bang in the kind of um eating disorder part so I kind of just wanted to say that 
you know, it could be something that you want to avoid because it, it is quite detailed about eating disorders and um, the character's kind of gone into like a, I don't know, like a hospital or like a inpatient or clinic, eating disorder clinic. So, um, you know, there's lots of kind of details around that. Um, still liking it, but I just wanted, I just wanted you to be aware. Um, yeah, so I've got a little rainbow there. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I've got to go and walk to the studio and then teach class. So I'll catch up later. Okay, that's better. Um, I finished Margaret and the Missing Body by Megan Milks. This was kind of wild. So in the, I saw a review on Goodreads which said similar, but on in, but then in the back it kind of said about what the book is indebted to. So it talks about like Nancy Drew, which I kind of picked up on Sweet Valley Twins and Goosebumps, and it's kind of mixed in with um girl interrupted yeah so it's kind of like a late 90s um queer coming of age story um and it kind of goes a bit um i was saying this morning that it has lots about eating disorders so that that uh, the main character's in a um like a clinic um and it's a lot of it is there and then it kind of goes like a little bit fantastical i'm gonna there was a little there was a bit kind of in the middle where I felt like it was like slightly dragging for me but then there's like this really amazing last section which is like a and uh, like the last chapter which is kind of a letter to someone but also felt like it's almost like a note from the author as well um, and it starts, it sort of, ha that this last little section has loads of different references which are kind of explained in the back from lots of different places and I really love that in books, this kind of, or in novels, this kind of linking with ancestors which I've seen, um, which I think kind of is in a lot of black writing as well but also um, recently I've seen in a lot of queer writing too and it's something I find it really sort of, um, you know, really heartwarming and, and a kind of lovely this connection through the years of of people um so yeah i mean i don't want to kind of i think the joy of this book is sort of just discovering it as you go along really and just kind of going with it so there's some stuff i kind of want to read out but i won't <laughs> um there's references jose esteban munoz and um weirdly of the other book i'm reading um, Heaven is a Place on Earth about like uh, American Utopias has also referenced him and he's like a queer theorist which I might have to um, get some of his work um, and then there was a quote here which is from Samuel R. Delaney which says to learn anything worth knowing requires that you learn as well how pathetic you were when you were ignorant of it which I loved um, I didn't really know what this was going to be. I thought it was sort of like a, I mean, it is sort of a little bit of a crime book, but not really. It's like a little bit of a mishmash of things. Um, but it actually has, it, you know, more maybe than the other ones, it's much more about the body. And I think in a kind of queer and trans sense, but also in the sort of discussions on eating disorders. And then there's a bit where it says, um, so thoughts, what was this? What did we achieve? Ian shrugs. I guess we were being challenged to listen to the body right, learning to give it what it needs. The standard, the body is always right lesson. So, yes. I really enjoyed it. Four stars from me for this. Um, it's got like a, it's like a really nice style to it as well. It's kind of quite funny um, and smart. And then, yeah, the ending is so good. <laughs>
Wednesday morning. Um, what's happening here? Um, I've got work in a in a second, but I just wanted. I thought I'd do like a a little bit of an update of where I am with Fearing the Black Body by Sabrina Strings. Um, I'm actually not far off the end. I think I've got about 50 odd pages. There's like a lot of notes at the back. So it's, you know, it's got loads of um, references and a big index as well. Um, published on New York University Press, obviously kind of uh, more of an academic book, um, but I'm not finding it too difficult to read though. It's not like, I don't know, some of other academic books I've just struggled to get through. I don't feel that with this it's it's easy enough to read although saying that it is like a little bit dry as well and I think I've just got out of the habit of reading books like this because I think the non-fiction I read often has that element of the personal in it this feels very much like a history book um but I am I'm finding it really interesting and um I'm glad I'm reading it as well but I also um while reading it aware of like all the gaps in my knowledge about different things. Um, the subtitle is The Racial Origins of Fat Phobia. Um, and it is interesting in that, you know, as I was saying, I'm kind of three quarters of the way through and we haven't actually talked that much about black bodies. Um, it's mainly been that kind of the, the origins, I guess, or this sort of setup of it. So talking, um, a lot about there's a lot about art in it so i guess yeah how artists during the like the um renaissance in italy uh how how they represented women which is kind of a little bit more kind of curvy and then i i don't quite sure where the leap how the leap came also a lot of it sometimes i feel like i've read about it and then i've missed something um so it could yeah oops <laughs> um yeah, and then somehow it goes into people being that is more fashionable to be to be thin, and there's this link between um, a kind of almost like a spiritual link or a religious link that if you're thinner, then you're going to be sort of smarter or I guess more spiritual than if you're um, kind of overweight. Um, yeah, you're, you're, it's almost like your senses are dulled, that kind of thought. So I think there's kind of a lot, there's obviously a lot in there. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, so far we haven't really got, we've talked a little bit about black women represented in, in um, art. So, yeah, I know there's another book, was it called, is it called The Belly of the Beast? I'll put the picture up, which is a similar theme and I'm wondering if that is more what I was expecting rather than this feels like this historical book that's really it's good and it's important it feels like a historical book that feels like almost like it's setting it up to something you know I, there's a lot more setup than I thought which is also fine I'm interested in seeing where it goes I'm on a chapter at the moment called thinness as American exceptionalism and then we get then the other chapters are good health to uplift the race um, so I guess it gets more into race there, fat revisited, and it's sort of about how doctors have, you know, viewed fats, and then the obesity epidemic is the last, is the last bit. So yeah, um, really interesting. I'm glad I'm reading it. I think it might be one of those books. If I wasn't reading it for sort of like a little bit of a project type thing, I might have found it interesting, but put it down and not, and not got back to it. And this is kind of making me read more of it. And um, I have to read it kind of, I can't read it at night because none of it goes in. I have to read it in the morning when my brain is like, you know, fresh. So yeah, that's that one. I'll uh, let you know when I've finished it. Okay, so I've kind of, um, gonna finish this. Blog. So I finished uh, Fearing the Black Body, The Racial Origins of Fat Phobia by Sabrina Strings. Um, I, would, I know I was already sort of saying about it wasn't quite, it almost felt like there's lots of um, 
build up to what I thought it was going to be and it wasn't quite it's not quite what I thought it was going to be so there's less about the black body I guess in terms of well, there's less about race and racism in this book than, than I thought I mean it's obviously there um but it's it's felt more like this build up and then it felt like it almost could be another book which kind of follows on from that um I found it did find it a bit dry but also I was really glad I read it and I kind of got a lot out of it and I got a lot of information out of it it just wasn't so much like you know it's an ac it's sort of an academic book it's not really written for fun reads I guess so it's it's doing what in that sense you know it's doing what it's meant to do um but I did I did think it was good and I have ordered that um Belly of the Beast as well because I thought it'd be a nice follow-on I saw that Sabrina Strings had also blurbed the other one so yeah if it sounds of interest um I think give it a go but it's not like yeah it's not like a super easy read but really interesting um but I did feel like I wanted it to go like a little bit further almost like it could have been like a couple of chapters longer maybe and kind of delved into it a little bit more but I did learn a lot kind of about sort of fat phobia and the kind of complete arbitrariness of like weight and um obesity epidemic and weight um you know controlling your weight and all the nonsense of it so that was really interesting so that's done so the two books i've read for this vlog are these two and i really enjoyed both of them um yeah so i would consider it a success and then i'm gonna do like maybe one more vlog i don't know i feel like maybe it's it's becoming a bit much <laughs> so i'll do one more but i'll kind of maybe keep it a little bit quicker but um so i've just started this one this morning um, My Body Keeps Your Secrets by Lucia Osborne Crowley and this is quite easy to read and I think it's going to be a bit um, quicker and it's talking about um, similar to this it's sort of talking about you know trauma in the body making you ill so kind of yeah yeah that's what it's doing um, so I'm also going to try and read this one as well but this might take me a little bit longer to read which is The Body Knows the School by Bessel van der Kolk so that's these are the ones coming up and then I've got Written on the Body by Jeanette Winterson, Queer Body Positive uh, by Essie Dennis. And then I did have this one already, which I haven't mentioned, which is The Body by Bill Bryson. Um, I'm not sure. I've never read any Bill Bryson. I don't know if he's my kind of thing, really. But I bought this to kind of understand the body in terms more for, like, yoga reasons. But um, I might give that one a go. And... Not really, not with Body in the Title, but I have started reading Cursed Bunny and I'm halfway through short stories trans translated by the Korean. So it's by Bora Chung, translated by Anton He. Um, I'm loving these. They're quite bodily. There's kind of body horror. They're, I'm, I get confused about like genres. <laughs> I think it's sort of literary horror, speculative fiction. So they're more like a bit or fantasy-ish. They're more like dark the dark stories um they feel a little bit in the same kind of area as danger smoking in bed that kind of thing um but the cover is so good the first story about a poo person that was amazing the cursed bunny story was great as well so yeah i'd say there's like trigger warnings for stuff in here but um definitely like the second second story i think was around like pregnancy um so trigger warnings around that and i think there's probably going to be some other stuff as well yeah, so I'll wrap this vlog up here. Um, it's Friday morning. The birds woke me up at 6am, which is very nice of them. And um, me and Bert have just been out and bought some bread and a croissant. So we're going to have breakfast and then we've got like a long weekend. Um, but I'll probably start the third part of this vlog as well. Um, I know that Sage, I think, has started reading some body books as well. So I'm sure um, their videos will be coming up around body books and you can see what they thought about some of the same books and some different ones um have a great weekend i'll catch you up catch you up i'll catch up <laughs> i'll see you again bye <laughs>